Um, so as Jackie said, I've been asked to talk about um, how we can reduce avoidable plastic waste um, and to give really the GCA's position but also some of my experience from UK greetings. So I guess like most of you, after watching the Blue Planet programme, um, I wanted to find out more. Um, so more than 8 million tonnes of plastic are dumped into our ocean every year. It's estimated that there'll be more plastic in our ocean than fish by 2050, which I just find is just staggering. Um, the government have pledged an ambition of zero avoidable waste by 2050 and zero avoidable plastic waste by 2042, but this isn't legislation, it's just a pledge. Um, and the forthcoming 2018 budget, there are rumours that there will be an introduction of taxation on the use of single-use plastics. <coughs> But what I will say is that plastic is commercially a fantastic um, product and if efforts are put into recycling and particularly with education and improving um, waste management infrastructure, we can make um, into a more environmentally friendly product. So after watching the Blue Planet programme I thought what, what can I do to make a difference? So, on a personal um, basis, and much to the annoyance of my two teenage daughters, um, I stopped buying plastic cotton buds, although I've since found out that you can actually buy paper ones. Stopped buying the makeup wipes. Um, I stopped buying um, plastic sauce bottles and moved into buying um, glass bottles, and I've started using Milkman again. And I guess if we all make a few small differences together, I guess we can make a difference. Um, as part of my role at UK Greetings, we set up a cross-functional team, which we call ourselves RAW, um, which is reducing avoidable waste, and I'll talk about that um, later. And also, we've been working with a number of our retail partners on the pros and cons of different substrates, but also about going naked. And then finally, working very much closely with Sharon and the other GCA members to really come up with what our recommendation is as a, um, as a GCA and what's right for our industry. So we talk to an awful lot of industry leading bodies to just try and demystify all the facts that are out there. Um, so we talk to RAP, we talk to Recoup, um, Rapid, Loxley's, Windles, and we soaked up all of this information and our plan was to stand here today and actually say this is what we think you should all do. But what's become very apparent is that the topic of plastic packaging is one that divides opinion and actually what's right for one particular publisher or one particular retailer isn't right for another. So what we hope to do today is just give you some facts for you to make an informed choice about what your strategy should be going forward and how you can reduce avoidable plastic waste. So we know that most people are actually trying to do their best to recycle um, plastic. Um, but the issue is that there's no consistency across the whole of the UK in terms of what councils will and won't collect or how they actually collect it. In fact, one of the things that I was absolutely staggered about is that there's actually three councils in the UK that don't actually collect any plastic recycling um, waste at all, which is just unbelievable. Um, generally most councils do a good job with things like plastic parts and especially plastic bottles but when it comes to the plastic film, the flexibles, which is generally what we use um, as an industry, there's only 19% of councils, so that's 73 councils across the whole of the UK that can actually collect flexibles curbside. We also know that we're recycling more than ever um, as a nation and we recycle about a million tonnes of plastic waste annually which is only though a 45% recycling um, rate and two thirds of that is actually shipped overseas. And then one of the issues is also the contamination. So because of the inconsistency across councils, some councils will collect plastic um, waste with just household waste other councils ask you to sort it out, um, so it's really, really difficult to try and come up with um, labelling that um, individuals can follow. So we think there's two main types of um, plastic flexibles that you could use for, um, for wrapping um, greeting cards. So they're conventional polyprop, which is called OPP, or PLL, which is PLA. Um, which is polylactic acid-based film, most commonly known as cornstarch. 
So OPP then, that's the one that is most commonly used by most people within our industry to wrap greeting cards. And it is 100% recyclable. However, there's not many curbside collections. I say there's only 19 councils that can actually collect it. Um, OPP is a highly sought after um, film for our industry due to its high grade quality. Um, however, it's not biodegradable. It can take over 400 years to biodegrade um, and it doesn't compost. And then one of the issues is that if PLA gets into the recycling stream, then it contaminates um, the OPP and the recycling um, stream. And OPP is cheaper than PLA. PLA um, is a bioplastic obtained from starch or sugar and is 100% compostable. The sugar and starch is taken from plants such as sugar canes and beetroot um, and it's processed through a, pro through a process of fermentation. Mass production limitations due to it not being a fossil um, based product, it has to be grown. Um, and it can't be mixed with the OPP in the plastic recycling stream because it will contaminate the plastic stream. PLA is compostable, um, but it has to meet very, very specific conditions in order for it to, be, um, for it to do so. And although it does biodegrade, it can take up to three years, so the chances are it still will end up at the bottom of the ocean um, or within landfill. And PLL, PLA is 100% compostable and can be transformed into clean energy. And it's also more expensive than OPP. So if we compare, I guess, the two types of substrates. Um, so OPP, yes, it's 100% recyclable, um, but there's limited councils that can actually um, recycle it. Um, it doesn't contaminate the flexible um, plastic recycling stream. It can't be composted and it isn't biodegradable. Um, it can be incinerated, it protects the cards and it keeps the card with an envelope. In terms of the compostable bag, um, it can't be recycled. It does contaminate the plastic um, recycling stream. It can't be composted in your, sort of your, um, your home um, um, garden waste. It can be composted on an industrial state scale into, with special conditions. Um, and although it does biodegrade, it can take, say, about three years for it to do so. And then it does, can be incinerated, it does protect the card, and it does keep the envelope with the card. So I guess they're the sort of pros and cons of both. So we're not saying that one is better than another, it's just they're the pros and cons. The third um, example, though, is to actually go naked um, and to remove plastic packaging completely. And that clearly ticks all of the green um, boxes, and it means that we reduce avoidable plastic waste. The downside, though, is that it doesn't protect the card and it doesn't keep the card with the envelope. So a fact, um, which I'm not sure how I feel about this fact, um, but more Brits worry about plastic than Brexit, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so I've estimated um, that for our everyday cards in the UK, 64% of the product that we have on sale has some form of plastic bag or packaging, and that equates to 900 tonnes. So that's a staggering amount, so if we can all work together to reduce that, we can actually make a difference to reduce an avoidable plastic waste. So I think there's three strategies that um, we could look at um, implementing. So one is remove, so you know, that's really straightforward, you know, it gives a big tick to the planet. The second one is to reduce. So that might be removing cellar bags but retain um, some sort of plastic packaging um, to protect certain um, intricate cards, so if it's got like a laser die cut or something. Or maybe considering removing plastic for spring seasons because it's such a small selling window. The third strategy then is to actually look at the substrates that you use with plastic packaging so and consider maybe using either compostable or OPP um, packaging. So the other thing that we've done um, is that we've been talking to a lot of retailers um, about the benefits of the different substrates and versus going naked. And I'm really pleased to say that a lot of retailers have got on board in terms of thinking about going naked and removing plastic packaging completely. 
So Aston were the first to actually decide to um, announce that they're going to go naked from next year. Um, so as stock sells through, they'll start to replenish with um, unbagged product. They are going to continue to use cellar bagging for certain items which need some form of protection, but the bulk of the range will be completely unbagged. Sainsbury's are currently um, just about to finish a 10 store trial and we're hoping to get confirmation in the next couple of weeks on exactly what the plans are for Sainsbury's. M&S are currently um, 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 embarking upon a 119 store trial um, and Clinton's are also about to kick off a 10 store trial as well. So there's a lot of really positive activity happening at retail. <coughs> And then I mentioned earlier about RAW, which is um, the UKG cross-functional team. So I'm going to go through a few ideas that we've actually implemented at UKG. You probably are doing something similar um, in your organisation. So small things such as we replaced all plastic cups with biodegradable cups in the warehouse. We had a reusable cup sale for everybody. We've removed plastic cutlery from the canteen and plastic bags from our staff shop. We remove plastic cups from the water fountain, so encouraging people to bring um, their own refillable um, cups. We reduce the cost, um, very important for me this one, um, reduce the cost of Costa Coffee um, if you use your own cup. Um, and then we introduce this thing called dumpster diving, which the idea actually came from Windows when you came to talk to us at the GCA. And that was basically just go and look in all of your bins and actually see how good a job you're doing in terms of recycling. And when we actually looked, we actually weren't doing that great a job, so we've since rolled out um, all brand new recycling bins across our business with some really clear, consistent labels so everybody knows what to do and what not to do. We're also um, doing an awful lot of transit testing at the moment, just looking at other different substrates. So we're looking at um, other types of biodegradable um, packaging. We're also looking at different compostable materials and actually seeing how stable it is when um, we um, transit through from Asia. We're exploring and testing um, a few ideas on the use of glue dots, um, stickers to hold the card and the envelope together. Um, and then also cardboard innovation to, again, to try and hold the card with the envelope. We're exploring paper banding unitisation from Asia, and then also different ideas on Euro hooks for, um, for roll wrap. And we've developed a set of guidelines for protective sleeve use, so when we do think the card warrants the protective sleeve, there's clear guidance for our retail partners and also um, all of our product teams. <laughs> And then we've also approached all of our suppliers and all of our independent retailers and we've written to them to actually just say, you know, what ideas have you got? Where are we adding avoidable plastic waste into our end-to-end -end supply chain? So I hope that's given you some facts and um, some ideas of things to think about when you're developing your strategies on how you can reduce avoidable plastic waste. Thank you.